Hey everyone, it's Matt here with Night Run Studio. Welcome to the Ultimate Beginner's Guide to Unity. In this course, we're going to take 10 lessons, each under 10 minutes, and provide a strong foundation to programming in Unity, while making a simple platformer game. In this first video, we'll do an intro to the Unity engine, and also look at how to import sprites so that we're ready to get started with our player in episode 2. That's where we're headed next, so uh, let's get started. Alright, so the first thing, not surprisingly, is to make sure you've downloaded Unity. Unity includes the hub, which is the launcher for the app, as well as the engine itself. I'm working with Unity 6, version 6000.2.10f1. You don't have to be using the exact same version to follow along. That said, I would recommend using Unity 6, as it'll save you from having to make adjustments due to minor changes and to menus and things like that, since some of the earlier versions. Alright, once you open Unity Hub, you're going to want to click New Project. In here, we're just going to click on the Universal 2D template, as that's going to download a bunch of packages like the 2D package, as well as things like lighting and post-processing that'll be useful in the future. You can give this a project name, I'm going to call mine Platformer, and then just select a folder to save in. At that point, we can create the project. Alright, so the Unity interface can be a little bit overwhelming at first glimpse, and we're just going to explore it one section at a time. We're going to start off with the assets folder, which is where we're going to put all of the sprites and scripts and any other assets we want to put into our game. For this project, I'll be using the Brackies platformer bundle. There's a link in the description and it is Creative Commons Zero, which means it's free to use for commercial or non-commercial projects. That said, if you use it, I recommend that you follow and maybe leave a rating for the creator as it just helps out another fellow creative. All right, at this point, you can locate it in your downloads folder. I'm just going to be using the sprites, so I'm just going to get that set up and then head to Unity. Here, in our Assets folder, let's go ahead and create a folder to keep things organized. We'll call this Sprites, open that up, now we can grab all of the sprites from whatever you happen to be using for your sprites and drag them on down here. Now at this point, I want to just show you how a sprite works in Unity. I'm going to be starting with the knight as my character, and if you click on the little plus button here, you'll see that the knight is already divided up into a whole bunch of different poses. I'm going to click on the first sprite here and drag him up into our scene view. The scene view in Unity is where we'll be building our game. While I'm here, I'm just going to turn on our gizmos, which will allow us to see the frame of the camera. And if we click on the game view, we can see what this will actually look like in our game, and clearly this character is very small. So let's go back to scene view, and we're going to click on the parent of our night sprite. Here, we're going to head over to the inspector, which is where we can change attributes of any assets in our project. The first thing we'll adjust is the pixels per unit. This character was made on a 16 by 16 grid, and so we'll put 16 pixels per unit. We can then click apply, and you'll notice that he's much larger now. He's also quite blurry, and if we change our filter mode from bilinear, we're going to go to point no filter, which will give us nice crisp pixel art. We're also going to change our format here because our color is a little distorted. All right, let's apply those things and then open up our sprite editor. And when we first open this up, you'll notice that Unity has already pre-sliced it, putting a box around each of the sprites. The downside of this is that each sprite has chosen a slightly different size for its box, which is going to cause us problems if we try to animate him. So I'm just going to slice and instead of doing it automatically, we're going to do it by cell size. Although this character is 16 by 16 pixels, he's been spaced out so that he's on a 32 by 32 grid. Sometimes figuring this out is just a matter of trial and error. At this point, we can slice and apply those changes and then exit the sprite editor. Now, when you look down in the bottom right, you can see that we've got nice square boxes around each of our player, which means he'll be set up nicely to animate a little later in the series. That said, we're going to switch our focus now to creating a bit of a background. So here, we're going to click on one of our platforms. Once again, I'll start by just dragging one of these platforms into the scene, and we have the same problems we did with the player. So once again, we'll set it to be 16 pixels per unit. That'll fix our sizing issues. We'll use point no filter to make it nice and crisp, and then 32-bit to preserve colors. Once we apply those, we'll notice that platform's looking pretty good. When we go to slice it up, you can see that currently this is made as one box here, and we're just going to break them up. So I'm just going to move the one outline so that it only covers that platform, and then just click and drag to create a new box around the smaller platform. I'll then just repeat this exact same process for each of these platforms, so there's both a small and a large version of it. We can then apply those changes and exit the sprite editor. Back in Unity, I'll click on the platform, and then using my Move tool, just adjust it so that it's right near the feet of my player. Now when I hit the play button, you can see that we have a wild and thrilling game. 
two sprites that do nothing. All right, let's make those a little more interesting. First of all, let's just drag this down so that our player can actually fall onto it once we get him ready. Now I'm going to click on my knight and rename him as player. And the first thing we want to do is give him some physics. For this, we're going to use a rigid body 2D. Now when I start the game, I've doubled up the fun. He now falls, but it's pretty lame if we're honest. So we want to make sure that he actually collides with objects. To do this, we'll add a new component to this game object called a capsule collider. It's shaped like a capsule, surprise, surprise. And if we click Edit Collider, we can use these nodes to resize it about the size of the player. I happen to like capsules as there's no rough edges that can get caught invisibly on other objects. We'll also click on our platform here, and we're going to add probably just a box collider to it, as the rough edges aren't going to cause a problem on this object as you're either on it or off it. Now when we play the game, we fall and land solidly on the platform. Alright, we're actually starting to get somewhere. At this point, we're ready to create a small level for our player. If we click on our platform, we can use Command D or Control D on PC in order to duplicate it, and then just drag out extra copies of it throughout the map, making a series of platforms that we'll be able to move along a little later. That said, floating platforms are a little weird, so let's head down to our world tile set here. We'll do what we did before, making it 16 pixels per unit. We'll use point no filter, set it to 32 bit, apply those changes, and then open up our sprite editor. Once again, we'll be using a grid by cell size for slicing, and it's 16 by 16. We can then slice it, click apply, and exit the sprite editor. Now you can see that we've got a whole bunch of tile sprites to choose from. Now I just want to add some dirt underneath these platforms, so I'm going to grab the second tile here and drag one right onto my map. Now duplicating this endlessly would be kind of painful, and eventually I'll show you how to do tile sets, but for now, let's just change the draw mode on this to tiled. That way it will repeat itself endlessly as we drag it out. Now we can go ahead and drag it to create a nice platform here. I can then use Command D once more to duplicate it and add some more ground underneath these platforms. Now at this point, I'm noticing that my hierarchy over here on the left with all my game objects is starting to get a little busy. So I'm just going to create an empty game object called Ground Tiles and then drag all of those tiles on top of it. This will allow me to child them under it and just close them up so that we can keep the scene looking a lot cleaner. Now at this point, the main thing we're missing is a background. So let's just right click. I'm going to go to 2D and we're going to add a sprite square. We can drag this to be as large as we want. And then if we go to the inspector, which is where we can change things about this game object, here we can just click on the color and give it a nice blue color to make it look a little bit like sky. At this point, Unity gets a little confused about which objects to render in front of which, so let's set the order and layer to negative one, so it's behind everything else, and then we can rename it as sky. We can hit play, and now things are working pretty good, except that I forgot to put colliders on a few of those platforms. We can actually do them all at once if we open up our ground tiles here, we can shift click to grab as many platforms as we want and go ahead and add a box collider 2D to all of them at once. Now the only problem at this point is that if we click on those tile set ones where we dragged out the ground, you'll notice that our collider is still just the size it was at the beginning. So we'll have to click edit collider and then just drag it out to actually cover the amount of space that we want to be collidable. All right, with that done, we can go ahead and test our game one more time. And now you can see that our ground is nice and solid. I'm actually going to click out of game view and into scene view here while the game is still playing. We can now click our player, move him around and drop him just to test that all of our ground is indeed solid. All right, that's looking pretty good. Hopefully at this point, you're starting to find your way around inside the Unity editor and are feeling pretty good about adding new objects and creating a player that has physics and collisions. In the next video, we're going to get this guy moving around. Hope to see you in that video. Until that time, though, this is Matt with Nightrun Studio. Cheers.